man, as always, um, speaking about the word of God and the message and um, just being excited by God, and, and period, um, tonight's message and thinking about Jesus and I'm thinking about last week's message as we talked about um, the new year coming in um, after Jesus going forth on the cross um, and thinking about how the graves opened up and how some things changed um, and how they were they were breached um, when Jesus went down, uh, but when he came back up is when uh, we saw the graves actually open and some things start to happen. Uh, and so this week's topic um, and text would be Happy New Year's. Um, and thinking about <clears throat> uh, after Jesus uh, suffered the cross and um, after Jesus went forth and um, yielded up the spirit, um, some things changed and he rent the veil uh, from top to bottom and he was able to uh, to put the blood on the mercy seat and understanding the background um, from this blood and from how it works um, and understanding how when he tore this veil um, that it granted sinners free access to God I'm not needing the priest any longer and thinking about in the Old Testament to where the priests uh, will go behind the veil and for the people offer up sacrifices and um, sprinkle the sprinkle the sacrificial blood of the lamb um, on, on, on for the people. I would understanding how when Christ went forth and um, um, they, they pierced him in the side and uh, the water came for our cleansing and then um, our sanctification and the blood uh, for our remiss remission of our sins. Um, and took the blood up to the mercy seat that um, the, the veil was rent. Um, and, and from that veil being rent, we see the access being opened and some things being changed uh, for us to be able to have this open relationship with God, um, understanding who Christ was and, and how we traded place uh, with Christ. And he, he bared our sins, um, understanding that he knew no sin, uh, but, he, but he was sent to bear our sins um, so that we could be uh, free, so that we could have this freedom um, but understanding Christ a bit deeper and thinking about um, that blood on the doorpost um, in, in the Old Testament and understanding how this was done before uh, um, the deaf angels swept through and there was a Passover. Um, and there were some things that passed over because of this. Um, we understand that Jesus is this blood um, and understanding how the blood was shed and uh, um, what it means for this to happen. Um, is, is important for us to know that why we drink it and why we eat uh, the bread and drink the blood and understanding this union that we end with Christ, um, that, that why this transformation happens and how we line up um, is big. And tonight's message, I want to kind of get into this and show us <clears throat> um, how God's womb is our tomb and, and how um, that Jesus went forth I'm mean, understanding the womb of God and how God was birthing something um, that there was a tomb there that, that had to be um, done with. And sometimes we have to go into a tomb and we have to be uh, done away with. We have to be buried in our old person um, and there'll be a new person that will be raised up with Jesus. And when we understand some things um, because we understand that, that, that it was God that raised Jesus up. And, and and God sent Jesus for reconciliation um, of man to to through Jesus uh, to a new creation and understanding how how God had this perfect plan um, of the Lamb that was slain before the beginnings of the world that we understand that that we're transformed by this um, and and I thought about of a bit deeper um, how this worked and thinking about uh, being transformed by um, the renewing of our mind and uh, thinking about. Um, that that to say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I um, mean, then thinking about you know how we're transforming, how this work. Um, and once we come forth and we figure out our gifts, and our gifts lead us to our purpose. Um, and our purpose leads us to our power. But usually it comes with some pain and understanding. Um, that that Jesus. He knew his gift. He knew that he was the gift of life. And we see that as he walked and as he moved, he gave this gift and un he, he understanding his purpose. I mean, he was able to move and, and understanding how to get this power um, and having to bear the cross that it was within the pain that he bared um, that gave him this power and understanding that, that that's how we work to where once we find our gifts and develop our purpose that, that we'll gain some power. But usually it takes some pain because it's in our problem that we have to embrace as Moses did um, to where we can open uh, and birth that new nation. Uh, but tonight's um, scripture being <clears throat> right in 2 Corinthians 
uh, chapter 5 of verse 17 is where I'll start. Uh, we just think about um, the new year and as, as Christ went forth and bared the cross and uh, the graves were open and there were some things that were turned around um, and there, were, there was the, t the end to some things um, because when he said this is it and he yielded up uh, 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 the ghost and he, and he, and he did this, uh, there were some things that had to be changed and turned around and um, the scripture kind of pulled out uh, what I kind of wanted to say if I would have um, had to come up with uh, kind of sort of the idea for after Christ has come forth and um, we should be changed by the renewing of our mind. Um, but it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. It says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And it says all things are become new, meaning uh, right then, right at that moment, right when we understand um, who Christ is and we understand uh, what has happened for us, um, there'll be some things that change and become new. It says all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And so understanding that these things that became new, that all of those things are of God, when we understand that if when we're in Christ Jesus. And so I'm um, so that to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the world of reconciliation. And so understanding how it says that not imputing um our trespasses, uh, but but having committed unto us the word or the word of reconciliation. It says, and now then we are ambassadors of Christ, and though it says, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God, for He have, for He have made Him to made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. And so as we think about what this scripture is saying and, and, and what our second Corinthians Corinthians is telling us and what Paul was saying when he wrote to, to Corinth there, uh, but he was saying that, that once we understand who Christ is and once uh, we, we take of uh, this, 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 this drink and of uh, this blood and we, we, we eat the bread that, that once we become in Christ, that we should become a new creature. I'm um, understanding some things happen, understanding uh, what Christ bore and what Christ uh, went forth and what Christ had done for us on the cross and understanding how, uh, when he said, uh, Eli, Eli, lama sabatani, um, um, and he was saying that, that Christ, he, he was saying, why, why are you forsaking me? The God, why are you forsaking me? Um, we understand that it sometimes it seems like um, how we are when we're, when we're in a, a situation and we're not exactly sure what God is and we're, we're trying to figure out, God, why have you forsaken me? But we understand that, that Christ, um, he had come to take on uh, the sins of the world and um, the sins of the people uh, so that they would be free. But when I thought about that, that cry out, that, that Eli, Eli, Lama Sabbatani, it just, I just thought about how we cry out and as he took on, on, took on our pain and took on um, our sicknesses and everything uh, that, that, that we would have to bear. I mean, he was crying out as we would, and it just showed while he, while he was on the cross there, um, the, the pain that he was enduring, and even how he went and he prayed, saying, let this cup, that, that this bitter cup pass, because he was saying, that, is there any other way that we could do this? Is there something else that could happen? But he said that, that, that nevertheless, your will be done. And so we understand that Christ had a, he had a mission, and he had a particular plan, and even understanding um, his walk and how he came in on the coat and how he had to go through some things and they, and they spat on him and, 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 and they humiliated him there. He understood who he was and he understood what he had to do and, and he understood that he had a purpose and, 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 and even in the mix of all of this pain and, and all of these things happening um, that he still understood who he was and, and, and even when we get to this point we understand that this um, text is talking about um, being in union uh, with Christ and understanding uh, the transformation um, and understanding even thinking about uh, the, the the wine that we can't put new wine um, into old bottles and once we change and once we have once we're born again and we're regenerated um that, that we have to understand um how to walk and and, and understand that this ministry of reconciliation uh, for, 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 from from men for men through Christ um that God put this perfect plan together 
um, for some things to happen at once. Uh, we understand this, um, that we understand Paul's special responsibility. Um, it was the task um, of this ministry of reconciliation, but, but it also was the task of those who received the ministry and understanding after that, um, the day of salvation came and thinking about um, how all of this worked together tonight. I kind of want to go through some scriptures and, um, and more so want to walk through some scriptures um, and kind of put some things together uh, um, in this New Year's and understanding the walk of Christ and um, understanding the atonement, um, how Jesus paid it all and how Jesus went forth um, to change some things for, for the reparation and understanding how it seems like sometime um, that people think that Christ um, is a blank check to kind of do with it, do whatever and live a life uh, and just put the blood on the doorpost. But we understand that this is a sign of the time and it's a sign for us to understand that there's a certain amount of time um, that we have to get it right before some things uh, will happen and we'll have to leave. But but we understand a bit deeper um, that, 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 that we have to understand uh, the walk of Christ and Understand that this power that we're looking for uh, comes with pain and how to, uh, I think, move on different levels and understand the difference between um, how money on the flesh level works and then how faith on God's level to where we can't purchase things in a spirit realm. So thinking about going to a, a McDonald's or something and producing that thing that you don't see, you can make that happen with, with money. But, but when we think about in the spirit realm, you have to have faith. You can't purchase things with faith. You can't walk into somewhere with a $20 bill and, and ask God to produce a blessing for. We have to have faith. And, and, and our currencies are different. I mean, tonight, understanding um, Christ a bit deeper, I think we'll work on our faith. And I have some scriptures that I kind of want to move through. Um, and the first one I want to go to um, is right at, at 1 John 8 through 10. Um, and I think this scripture uh, is pretty big uh, because it, it lets us all know that 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 we have um, a need for God and we have a need for Christ um, because that, that we are all far short of the glory. And there's some things that that we all have. Um, and there's a reason um, that, that we can use uh, Christ to heal some things and to fix some things and to get us to be able to love each other um, openly I mean, not look at each other in any type of way, but um, right at First John or First John, um, eight through ten. What I start at seven, but it says, "But if we walk in the light, as he is in the as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us all from sin." And so we have to understand that that Christ came forth for a reason and understanding if we didn't need Christ, there would have been no reason for him to come forth and no reason for to him for him to have been slain before the origins of the world. Uh, but but there's a reason and understanding that we need uh, Christ and we need this blood to cleanse us. Um, that it says if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. It says if we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It says, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and the word and his word is not in us. And so we understand that we've all fallen short and we've all sinned. Um, and this is the reason why we all um, need God and we need uh, Christ and the need to understand um, the difference um, in the spiritual world in our in our in our natural realm and even understanding um, that that we don't fight in the in the natural we fight I mean our spiritual because our weapons are not carnal uh, but but this but this is this is deep because we have to understand that we've all sinned and we all need uh, the blood of Christ and we all need God to work on our spirit um because we understand that that God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth um and there's a big difference from our spirit and our flesh. And our, and our flesh is actually a reflection of our spirit. Um, but I want us to go a little bit deeper. I'm um, going to have another scripture that I want to go to um, right at 1 Peter um, chapter 5. Um, and I'll start at verse 4. And I can kind of move through these. And if you want to move along, uh, come with me. Uh, but I'll start at 1 Peter um, chapter 5 verse 4. And I'll read through um, 11. Uh but it says, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. 
And so understand that, that, that when God comes forth and we understand uh, this blood has been shed, we understand that, that, that this thing ha that has been done when he, when he rent the veil and when he tore this veil from top to bottom and even understanding the size of, the, of this veil, how many men that it took um, to carry it, that, that we understand that, that, that it was a sign uh, that some things had happened and understanding that God, ha God has some signs of, of the time and we see um, how the, even the signs of the time now um, with the destruction and with how the world is, we see we can see the signs of the time and see um, this battle in the, in the spirit realm uh, showing in the flesh and understanding this reflection of what's going on in the spirits and what's going on in the heavens. Um, here in the earth, we can understand that there's a reflection um, going on and there's some things uh, that we can see happening. But it says, when, when, when the chief shepherd uh, shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And so meaning we have a, a time that will come forth and there will be some things that happen. But he's saying that, that resist of being proud uh, because God give of grace to the humble. But also think about humility and how we come forth open, uh, not, not looking at each other in any type of way, but only worrying about ourselves and, and lining up with the word of God. But he said, casting um, all your care upon him for he care for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, a walk of about seeking whom he may devour. It says, whom resist with steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strength, and settle you. And so understanding um, how this text is, are talking to us and understanding how we are being members of one body. We have in different offices um, that we have to learn how to work together. And we have to learn um, how we're all suffering these same afflictions. And there's no need to add more um, because Christ has come for us all to be free and for us all um, to have this freedom and for us all to be able to walk and move in a new light and move into some things uh, to where some things can happen different for us. Um, but, but I want to move through a couple of scriptures and kind of walk through the story um, as we see Christ and I want to move to Matthew chapter um, 11 um, at 26 first and I'll kind of be moving around because I want to walk through and tie some scriptures together um, but I want to start at Matthew um, chapter 11 um, verse 26 and right at 11 there and 26 we see um Right here, it says uh, Matthew, right before um, John questions for Jesus. And um, we, we see that, that, that the unrepentant cities and, and how these things were going forth. Uh, but, but, he, but he came forth and Jesus was talking about um, those that were heavy and th those that needed some rest. And we, we, we're all trying to figure out uh, where's the resting place, where is the place that, that, that we can actually get uh, uh, something done and we, we can get some solutions without causing more problems. Um, but, but he's saying uh, right here at, at Matthew 11, starting at 26, he says, Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. It says, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. It says, And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. It says, Come unto me, and all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. It says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So he's telling them to learn of me. And we've spoken this in the last couple of, couple of weeks. I'm learned in the Greek text, meaning to be I'm, I'm, I'm learned by experience, meaning I've tried this and I've I've went through some things and I've learned um, that, 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 that God is who he is, that the God is, um, and that Christ has said that I am. But but I, but we've learned that in these situations and in the mix of going through this and learning it by experience, um, that there's a different um a different strength in this um but 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 understanding uh, that that he was saying that that learn of me he said for I am meek and lowly in heart he says and ye shall find rest unto your souls he says for my yoke is easy and my burden is light 
And so he was trying to get them to understand that, that if we just go a bit deeper and if we just um, get into this word of God to where we can learn and understand um, that God has made this, this perfect uh, this perfect gift, this perfect uh, plan for us to be saved and this perfect plan for us to have some things changed around and for, uh, for like I said, these tombs to be opened and for, for, for our lives to be changed. Uh, but we have to understand this um, in a different way. Um, but I want to move um, over now to Matthew. Um, and I'll start with uh, right at Matthew 26. And I want to read through a couple of scriptures and kind of talk about um, what has happened and how these things have went forth and kind of give some scriptures here, then move to a couple more um, and we'll be able to wrap it up. But uh, right here in Matthew uh, in chapter 26, if you move to 26 and we see um, as I move through uh, the walk and how things happen and we see um, this plan um, to, 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 to kill Jesus and um, these religious leaders plan to kill Jesus and he had just talked uh, taught about uh, the stewards of the talents and, and we remember we learned about that um, and how to steward these talents and um, how they were sent out and they were that they had um, they were to return with these talents and they were to return with having the work done and understanding how he spoke about being ready with uh, the oil and the lamps and understanding how they didn't have time to go and get oil at the time when they needed it uh, but but understanding the the lead up to this and how um Jesus prayed um with a sorrowful prayer uh, uh, that 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 not let this cup pass but he said that um indeed that if this is the will that this is what I have to do that let your will be done uh, um, but we see he, he goes to pray and then after this um he be, he's betrayed um and arrested and then Peter denies Jesus and uh, um Peter even they told Peter that that we saw you with him and we, we saw you uh, uh before um aren't you the one that was with him and Peter even denies um Jesus but see Jesus already knew these things and Jesus already knew that these things were going to happen and even Judas after he figured out what he had done and and he hung he hung himself and we see uh, um, all of these things unfold and, and we see Jesus come before Pilate and they're not able to really find um anything in him they're not able to find any wrong but but understanding how 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 he he didn't want anything to do with it. and he told the people that that, that this is on you and, and they cried out and they and they cried out to crucify him and thinking about um how um he had to walk and how even uh, the men this the men Simon of Cyrene um had to come and help to compel the cross and to, to carry this cross and then um 45 is where I want to read and where I want to kind of start um because we see he had, they they had tried to give him the vinegar a uh, mingle with the gall and he wouldn't drink it because we understand that Jesus wanted to pay the full price. He wanted um, to go forth so that we could understand that there's nothing that we can't have to handle. There's nothing that that, that that we can't take on and we can't come back from. And after he had went forth um, and buried um, and buried uh, the cross and, and then they had the, the keys um, to, to, to death and the grave and understanding him um, coming forth with all of this, all of this power that, that we see they had, they had tried to uh, make Jesus um, looked like um, somebody that he wasn't and uh, they brought him here to be crucified because we understand that, that the crucifixion of of, of the thieves and, and people like that uh, was what happened here but we see right here on the cross and um, as I start reading um, on at 45 Matthew 27 and 45 um, but he says that now the sixth hour um, there was was darkness over all of the land until the ninth hour and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani. He says, that is to say, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And this is where we understand he's taking on the pain. He's, he's taking on uh, the switching of, uh, of taking on our role and taking on uh, our pain and all of our destruction. And we see that he's crying out here to, to get us to see the pain and get us to understand uh, the measure of pain that he took on for him to cry out and in a in a in a in a, in a, in a question to say, my God, why have, why have you forsaken me? We can we can understand Christ at this point on the cross, and we understand him yielding up uh, the, the the yielding up the 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 ghost there. And when he yielded up, he he told God, he said, this is he wanted 
that his ghost to go to God. And we see there in Luke that he commanded the spirit. He said, the father into thy hands. And Luke, I think it's 23 and 46. He said, father, that, that I command into thy hands my spirit. But but he said that 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 um, some of them stood there. And when they heard that, they said, this man called for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and fitted with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. And the rest said, let be and let us see whether Elias will come to save him. It says in Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to, bo to the bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks rent and the graves were opened and many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many and understanding um how this means that, that that these graves arose that there are some dead places and some dead things and god's people are in some dead places and after he said that, that, that this is it that, that we should understand that that was the end of some things and this should be a new year and understanding what christ took on and that that our graves should be open the places that we're dead in uh, should be coming alive and that there should be some things changing around and we should be going i mean to the city showing the people um, the true power of God and what Jesus had done. And we see that, that now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly saying, truly, this was the son of God. And understanding that, that, that when they saw this power, when they saw these things happen, that we understand that Jesus had went forth and he, he, he was put into this tomb, but I, it's, but we understand that, that he was to be put um, into the hands of, 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 of bad men and, to, and three days um, he will raise again. But we see that the power of God come forth after these three days and that understanding that, that, that even Jesus cried out to, for, to forgive them for they knew not what they do. And after that, the stone being rolled away. And I kind of want to get to um, a couple other scriptures because I want you to see how this thing happened and how as they went to look for Jesus and he wasn't there, but then he came back and showed himself uh, to them and uh, even how Thomas was. And Thomas didn't believe because when Jesus came back and showed himself, uh, Thomas wasn't in the room. And Thomas said, unless I see um, the holes in his side and the holes in his hand, he said that I will not believe I'm mean, understanding how Jesus came back even to show Thomas that I want us to see um, the story unfolding, how these things happen. And I want us to go to Luke 23, um, uh, 23 and verse chapter, yeah, chapter 23, verse 50. And we see some things happening, um, how the story um, opened up and how these things were turned around. Um, but, 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 but I want you to be able to see the resurrection and how that 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 he was to be um delivered into the sim in the hands of sinful men and be crucified, but but on the third day rise again, and how um scripture was fulfilled. Uh, but we see that 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 right um at thirty at twenty three and fifty says, and behold, there was a man um named Joseph, counselor, um and he was a good man and just. And so understanding that as we see this happening, so we see that at the same that had not consented to the counsel. And the deed of them, he was Arimathea in a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. It says, and this man went into Pilate and begged the body of Jesus, and he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sculpture um, that was hewn in stone. And so understand that they had put Jesus in a sculpture, and, and they had laid him away, and then they came back. Um, but, but they were confused because uh, when Mary came and she didn't see Jesus, she was nervous, and she had went and told him this. I mean, they went looking and after he came and showed himself, they were a bit confused. I mean, they didn't understand exactly what was going on, uh, but but we see um, Christ had a plan and Christ already knew uh, what was going to happen. He knew that that I must go um, so that the comforter must come. And so understanding that at this time when he had went forth and, and suffered some things and he understood um, that, that, that he what he had to do and how he had to go forth. Um, that, that we see in Acts um, chapter 1 is where I want to move to and where I want to show us some things next and want to look at how um, the, these things unfolded and how um, the scripture fulfilled itself. And we see at Acts 1 and um, understanding uh, right in Acts 1 and between Acts 1 and 2, um, 
that, that, that when they were trying to figure out the time and um, right at four and more acts one and four and being, being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the father which saith he, ye have heard of me for truly John baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy ghost. Not many days hence, when they therefore will come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom of Israel, the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for, for you to know the time or the season which the Father has put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses, witness unto the, both me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And so understanding that, that, that Jesus yielded up the spirit and after um, this thing happened that we see, um, after Jesus yielded the spirit up and after these things change and we see this time go forth that, that this scripture is fulfilled uh, because we see next that it says that when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they had, and while they looked steadfast toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye seen him go into heaven. And so understanding that then they went into this upper room, and it says, they Then returned they into Jerusalem and found at the Mount of Olivet, which is called Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey, and when they came, and when they came in, they went up into the upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip, Thomas and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon, Zelotes and Judas, the brother of James, and remembering how this 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 place was where uh, Jesus was born at and in this house um, that they had to come back uh, for, for this upper room. And so remembering how all of, all of these things came and fulfilled the scripture. And after Jesus went forth and he yielded up the, the spirit and uh, uh, some things happened and these graves opened up and we see this power of God come forth. And then after that, we see the day of Pentecost coming. After the day of Pentecost come, there was a sound and we see that the city was filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with the utterance as the spirit gave them utterance and we see that there was a maze because uh, that there was a dwelling at jerusalem um jews devout men out of every nation under heaven and now when this name now when this was noise abroad the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own tongue and they were all amazed and marveled saying to one another behold are not all these men which speak galileans and how how we hear every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. And so we understand that, that, that this was uh, the, 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 the scriptures being fulfilled. And this was some things happening. This was the power um, being fulfilled. And after um, Jesus went forth and we see that, that Luke continued to write in Acts. And Luke continued to show us um, some things, uh, um, the story and how um, the story unfolded. And understanding how the scripture became fulfilled. And after Jesus went forth and we see that that, that this thing was uh, scattered out. And after we see God um, create this perfect blessing to come forth and, and bring everything together. That after Jesus yielded up that spirit and after um, the graves opened and some things changed. And then we see this Holy Ghost and this and this power touched down after they were looking. I'm um, trying to figure out what had just happened. But we understand that Jesus had just yielded up the spirit and yielded up the ghost to make some things change and to turn some things around and, and to put us in a different position and to, to trade places with us to get us to understand that that, that that pain that we were dealing with and that, that the problems that we were dealing with and, and everything that we were going through. He said that, that this is it, that he had yielded up that spirit for us to understand that, that we could then walk with the power of God and understanding this blood and um, how these things had changed, that, that Jesus uh, was God in the flesh and understanding that God was showing us um, that, that 
that he, that he loved us so much um, that he sent us an example, that he sent us, um, his son to die on the cross to be um, uh, changed in places with us so that we didn't have to bear this cross. We didn't have to go forth and understanding how, how they, they, they killed Jesus and, and they did this trying to, to get us to stay down, to get us to not think um, that we could get up. But we understand through the power of God um, that, that God raised Jesus up in the same one um, that, that raised Jesus can raise us up. And But, but we have to understand that, that in the mix of, of God's uh, womb, that there's a tomb and there's some things um, that have to be uh, reborn and rebirthed. And so understanding that in the mix of this, and um, Jesus came forth for the re reconciliation of, of, of man through Jesus, I mean, understanding for us to be um, created into some new creatures and for us to understand that we can walk freely and be transformed in the renewing of our mind and have the mind that was in Christ Jesus and understand that, that we walk and we, we walk uh, with not the spirit of fear, with the spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind and understanding that, 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 that as a dog returned to um, the, the places that they release and the places that they urine um, and they vomit, that, that, that our fool will return to foolishness, but we're trying to get our people to see that that we can't put this new wine into old bottles and we have to understand the power of God and the love of God that was sent forth and once we understand who God is and the power of Christ um, that, that went forth and the power uh, that comes from uh, from Jesus being on the cross and the scripture being fulfilled to where God was able to then raise him from the dead and uh, get us to see even how, how, he, how he, he folded up everything um, in the grave and we see on um, the two angels at the beginning of the end to, 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 to get us to understand that at uh, the beginning and uh, um, the end that Jesus I was the beginning of the end, and we understand that, that the power of Jesus was sent um, for us to live free and for us to have power to understand who God is. And the moment that we work on our spirit, and the moment we come into a new revelation of who Jesus is, and we understand uh, um, why Jesus went forth and why uh, we now understand the sacrifice of, uh, uh, of the bread and of the blood, and, and how Jesus went forth. And when this veil was torn, that we didn't need a priest and we didn't need anybody to get us to God. God, that all we have to do is cry out like, like, like the man at the pool all he, he had to do was cry out and reach out and understand that there would be some things changed like blind Bartimaeus he just cried out and he understood that there was some things to be changed and even understanding how Jesus he walked and he understood that he he was giving this gift of life and he was helping these people that were blind to see and these people that were lame to walk and even understand how he gave his life to to, to even get us to see that that even I'm um, in the time that that we didn't know that we would need Jesus and understanding God's plan that he slain him uh, before the beginnings of the world and Jesus looked out and saw us coming and he saw the line of us coming down that that would sin and that would already do these things so we would need someone uh, to sacrifice for us and he, he looked out and said that, that I'll go and I'll, I'll, I'll shed this blood and I'll, I'll, I'll go forth and sacrifice and, and go forth and bear the cross so that my people will, will be able to live free and that my people won't have to go through um, all of these different things and they'll have to to be able to have some strength and know um, who God is because we see uh, power in God and we see how God lives through us. But tonight's message that after we understand Jesus that we'll have, I mean, it'll be a new year. It'll be a new us. It'll be some new things that happen because we'll move in a new light and we'll be understand why we were the firstborn and why uh, there's some things that happen different for us and why we're just on a higher standard because there's a different blessing for us. There's some different things that's been set up for us. I mean, tonight's our scripture in tonight's message is to get us to understand that, that after Christ had came and after Christ um, had bared the cross and it went down, I mean, he came up with all power, that then it was a new year, then it was some things that should happen, then it, everything should have been renewed because we understood the power of Christ and the power through God. And so understanding that, that even thinking about restarting a new year without God, how we, we plan a lot of things and we do a lot of things and thinking about being on the world's time, that, that at the beginning of the year, I think about plenty of things but but normally I don't think with God and so as I thought about going forth and I thought about uh, the resurrection of Christ how Christ goes forth in order for things to change in order for uh, some graves to be opened up and I think about Lazarus how Jesus came and after he after he did that that blessing that they said that was it um, because he, he, he had brought Lazarus back um, from the dead and Lazarus came out praising and jumping and excited. And I can imagine once we come out of our dead places and once 
we come out of these places that God is dealing with us in, that we'll come out like Lazarus jumping. I mean, excited. But but after Jesus had done this, uh, they, they said that was enough. And so we understand that, that the world don't want us to have power and they want to be able to make money off of our bad decisions. So we have to understand who Jesus is and we have to understand the power of not being sold or not being bought, but knowing exactly who we are and knowing our purpose. And tonight's message to end um, our study and to end what we've been studying, um, I want us to, to understand um, and think about um, how our gifts um, takes us to um, our purpose and how um, our purpose leads to our power. And so I thought about um, how our gifts shows us our purpose. And once we figure out um, our gifts, um, it'll give us our purpose. And then our purpose I will lead us to our power. And as we understand our purpose more, it will give us our power. But 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 our usually um, our power comes from our pain and understanding um, the pain that Jesus had to go forth and bear and these things that he had to go through. Um, that all of this power came from him bearing the cross and, and going forth and, and going forth to the, the, to death and then being brought back. But but understanding even us that that there's some problems that we have and understanding until we grab a hold of these problems and until we grab a hold of these things and, and get with God and understand that that problem will be our solution that builds a destiny for us. But, but well, sometimes we miss it because we don't like going through pain and we don't like handling those things that are, are exactly um. The the, the, the the steps that we have to take to, to kind of heal those wounds. But but I guarantee that our gifts, once we figure them out, they'll show us our purpose. And once we understand our purpose, our purpose will lead to power. But but I want to warn you that that that, that, that power that we're looking for, that we're trying to get that success, the money and the things I'm um, in the world, that everything that we're trying to accomplish, it comes with some pain and we have to bear some things. But but I want to tell you that 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 that, that even like Moses, when when we understand this pain and we go forth and we grab that snake and it turns into a rod and it becomes the thing that we can use um, to birth a new nation and to show some people a new way that we'll understand uh, why Christ had to go forth and bear this cross and why uh, we have to bear our pains and why we have to deal with um, these pains to where we can even show people that they got me here, they hurt me here, but but I'm here to tell you that I still made it and I'm, I'm here to tell you that, that you can make it and um, that even though you have to bear some pain, that, 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 that you can still um, be who God has called us to be. But tonight's message, I'm understanding um, the new year and the things that are coming, that God is birthing some things and transforming some things. I mean, it'll be renewing us, uh, but, but, but happy new year. Happy